and get back on. So start with holding the pencil lightly. And instead of holding it like this, maybe start with it like this. And let's just kind of begin with the backbone of the flowers and just let yourself imagine the flowers are kind of maybe even feel it in your body, lean back. And so they were just kind of opening their heart and let yourself kind of play doing a, a brush stroke off to the right. Or, I'm sorry, a pencil stroke. <laughs> Um, and we're going to paint the energy as if they were growing from the bottom of the page. And then let's take another, if you need to, you can switch to holding this way, whichever is comfortable for you. Starting at the bottom, uh, starting about a finger's width, and then kind of inching your way towards the other line so it gets thinner towards the top. And you can see that mine, I don't know, you can check and see yours. Mine starts a little bit to the left of center and it ends up very much over to the right of center, but there's a lot of room here for us to now, oh, about a little, about one third of the way up, put in a leaf. So let yourself just feel the energy kind of come up and down, doesn't have to be the same as mine. And then let yourself decide if you want to come in under or over. And I think I have enough space here. I'm gonna come in under. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna think of this going wide. I'm not gonna draw it yet. And then accentuate the movement and then come in and down. So I'm gonna let this be wide here, come in a little bit and just let it droop down. And again, yours doesn't have to be the same as mine. We did do a, a class on just leaves, which I don't think any of you ladies were in. <laughs> Maybe Shoshana was, um, you missed that one. Sorry, so we're kind of doing this backwards, jumping right into leaves. <laughs> um, so let's do this. Let's come up here. Let's do a little line that's connecting your leaf to the stem. And then imagine through the center of this leaf, again, is the backbone, like maybe lift and arch your body too. So you kind of really connect with that energy that goes through all living things that have a backbone. And then just find that backbone in the center of the leaf. The spine of the leaf. Okay, now we're gonna come up here and we're gonna make a circle about the size of a quarter. I'll make mine darker so you can see it. And it's a little bit of an oval. It's not a perfect circle. I'm gonna make it. I got a little too much graphite. I'm just gonna lift a little bit so it doesn't Okay, now to give the illusion that a petal, we're gonna have, we're gonna have, let's see, one, two, we're gonna have one, two, three, I think maybe four or five petals, but we're gonna start with the one coming towards us. So to give it the illusion that the petal's coming towards us, we're gonna, cut, we're gonna go like this here on the bottom of this, um, of the opening to the center of the flower. And then we're gonna, to, to foreshorten it, we're gonna make it very wide, as wide as the uh, petal. And then we're gonna go and make the spine of this petal go up. You can make it really curvy or you have it go down. These, these lilies have a lot of curve in them. And then you're just gonna bring the sides 
together. Something like that. Now we're going to make one going off the side. So we're going to start in the center a little bit. You can see here and like almost like the side of a tongue. I'm going to come up and down like that. Or again, however you want. It's all organic. Now the bottom of this one is hidden. So I'll wait for you to do the top. But imagine it's behind here. So I'm going to pick it up here. And then I'm going to lift it up and down. And then again, I'm going to draw its spine. And you can really feel the weight of these. Now, the one that goes away from us is going to disappear a little bit. So it's going to come out of the center and just kind of fall off. and fall off. And then imagine, okay, let's do the center of it. The spine would go here and you wouldn't see it. It would just be folding back under here somewhere. And now we're going to do one that comes up and open like that. And we're going to do the top of it. Oops. And the bottom of it. And then we need one more because four is too stagnant. I'm going to come over here and just drop one. You might need it on this side or that side. It's up to you. And then the spine of it can kind of disappear. And you can kind of just indicate this is good. They're going to just disappear in there. So you don't really need to draw that as we'll leave that blank for now. If anything, we're going to erase. If you have your needed eraser, we're now going to erase this little circle that we put as our guideline here. I'm just lifting the graphite. And here, we're going to bring stamens up and we're going to let them go off. The, so the stem is going this way. We're going to let the stamens go off this way. So just coming out of the center of this circle, a straight line with a stamen. And these can be really uneven because when you make them uneven, it gives the illusion of the foreshortening. Now, I did not leave a lot of room on mine for a bud. And I want to put a bud. So I think I'm going to do it down. Hmm, let's see here. First of all, I will find this has got to come, it's got to have a stem. So I'm going to create a sense of a stem connecting to the main. And guess I'm going to put my bud down lower and I don't want it to be at the same point. So I'm going to take it down here, but I'm going to let it go higher than here. So it starts lower than this intersection, but it ends up higher here. I'm going to make it thicker at the top so it can hold on to the bud. 
And then I'm just going to do like a, a little bed shape. That crazy camera move is going to be in the recording. Okay. <laughs> now I'm going to pause here for a second. What you want to do is before you paint is make sure that any lines that are supposed to be behind other lines are now erased. Um, Cause they will get locked in there. Or any okay. lines you feel are too, like here, I have a, I have a bunch of lines. I think I'm going to just gently lift some of those. And here, maybe there's a little too many. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just don't want a lot of graphite there. Okay, start so, with just our brilliant color here. And we're going to pick out the shadow side, the darkest shadow side. And, and instead of working from light to dark, like we often do, we're going to go from dark to light. So I know that this, if the sun's coming from here, this petal is definitely going to be in the shadow, right? Everyone's able to imagine that on theirs. So I'm leaning my hand down, resting my other one. I'm going to just dive right in because I've already done my drawing. I'm just going to use the tip of my brush. And if you, you can practice on the side if you want to, if that gives you more com confidence. Where Remember, we get our brush to a tip and then we, what we've done before where we push and lift. So you're practicing your brush control. I'm going to do that here. I'm going to push, create this shadow. And as I move, I'm going to lift and get lighter and lost and found all the way. Then while it's still wet, I'm going to go back into my pigment and drop a little bit more in and just spread it around so it creates a modulated shadow, uneven, very organic looking. It looks like it's dripping. <laughs> and I'm gonna let that dry and move on before I do the mid-tone. So I'm gonna come in under this one and do the same thing, very thin here where I would be seeing the top of the petal and then let it get fatter. And then I'm letting it get thin, the line. And then I'm gonna just look at it and see how does it feel? It feels a little um, uh, like hesitant here. So I'm just gonna come back in and just be bold about it. Push and lift there, feels better. Now the sun's coming on the top of the flower. So I'm gonna have on this forward one, I'm gonna start the, I'm not gonna go in there. I'm gonna go very thin here, very thin. And then I'm gonna come thick down in here. Thin where it widens, thin towards the tip. And it, you know, just imperfect. Thin where the light's hitting it, thick in the shadow area. It's organic. No one's going to ever see this in real life. I mean, no one's ever going to see this real imaginary, <laughs> real imaginary, imaginary, real, real imaginary flower. So you don't have to get it. It's not like you have to like, oh, there's a likeness. It's not like, oh, that flower's nose doesn't really look like that. That flower doesn't have a nose. It's going to start to dry a little bit lighter. So now I'm going to come in on the other side here. Same thing. Coming in underneath, creating a shadow. And this bottom one. You just, you want to just look at your lines and make sure that you've got 
a very, and you want at least one of these to be as thick as your brush when you push it down and come back up. And that, that at, at least somewhere in here, the lines get as thin as the tip of your brush. And the line can completely disappear and some you don't have to have any line at all. It's gonna disappear where you want it to, the mystery of it. Okay, how is everybody doing? Are we, are we, you tell me before I move on. I just wanna make sure, looks like Holly and Edie might still be working on their shadow lines. Want a little bit more time? Working too. Okay. Um, it's okay, it's good. It's letting this dry a little bit. You can look at your own and see how it's starting, see how mine's starting to dry and create a, a little bit of texture in there. It's tempting to touch it, but it's kind of, you know, it's really nice to just let it. So while it's drying, I'm going to clean my brush. I'm not going to actually, I don't need to clean it that much, really. Depends how much of a messy person you are, like me. I'm a messy person. I'm going to mix up some green. And I'm gonna let my pink stay on my brush with my green because I know that when I let the pink go into my green, it creates a nice olivey color. So I'm making a very kind of olivey, I happen to like that combination. If you want your green to be brighter, go right ahead. How do you create an olivey green? Um, I left the pink on my brush and then I went into my green and it's gonna, that little bit of, and it, what it does is also, it, it creates a palette that's connected by leaving your other color on your brush. I mean, I do kind of make the joke like, oh, I'm messy, but it really does, it gives like a thread that goes through your palette that it has a similar, root, you know, it's got that same magenta color in there. So now I'm going to test my green, wipe, 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 wipe. Get to a nice point, get my little tester sheet out here and push and lift and see if I like that color next to my pink and I do. So I'll wait for you, everybody to mix theirs. Um, see how as it's drying, it's what's happening in there. It's getting lighter. It's kind of creating that watercolor -y transparency. This one's staying dark. I'm just going to let it stay dark. Now, I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up and feel the energy of the um, stem and the leaves. So I got my you hand. You want the, the brush kind of dry when we're putting the paint on? The green, uh, yeah. it is, it's not sopping wet. Yeah, it's not quite, it, it would be more towards pasty than, I don't know if you can see here. It's wet enough and you can, you can see, do test that when you test your color, you'll see that when I drag it, it does get a little bit of like a dry brush look in there. Yeah, okay. But it doesn't have to be completely dry brush. Do what feels good to you, but we don't want it, we don't want it so wet that it's running. Okay. And now I'm starting at the bottom of the page. We're gonna add water on the next layer. You'll see, we're gonna extend our mid-tones by adding water. We're working from dark to light, kind of different approach. So I'm gonna start at the bottom using the side of my brush because I want it to be nice and thick. And this one I'm gonna paint like, the dreaded bamboo. We had we had the class in bamboo. I don't know if you were there, but it's going to be a drag and a stop and a little bit of a. So I want it to feel um, straight lines connecting. So I'm going to leave a little space and I'm going to drag and stop. 
and leave a little space. I'm gonna drag and stop. Notice how I'm getting thinner as I move. Huh, weird. I have three. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you see, it's getting thinner. If you need to practice on your side sheet, go right ahead but it's almost like a bamboo. It, um, I, want, I really want the contrast of a straight stem with a very, it's gonna make the petals of the flower look even you know, more um, feminine and flowy by having a very straight stem here. I push and lift. I'm just gonna kind of let that disappear. Thinner, but the same approach here on the bud. Okay, and I'm gonna keep going before my paint dries. <laughs> um, I'm gonna wipe, 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 get it to a point and do this, make sure I have a connection here showing a line, even if you don't see it. So we know that behind here, there is a stem holding the center of this flower. So I'm not gonna see it, but I'm gonna follow it down to where it comes and connects to the stem and I'm going to paint that in here so it looks like it's being held. And then I'm going to, when you're, oh wait, is everybody, tell me when you're ready to do the leaf part again. Everyone ready? So with the leaf, I've got these three lines. And I've decided that this section here is actually gonna be the front of the leaf folded forward and that the stem, the backbone is hidden. So my backbone would be back here and I'm gonna let this come forward as the front of my leaf. See what I mean? And I want something kind of heavy like that. I'm gonna wipe my brush, it's a little too heavy. You might wanna watch this really quick. I've just wiped my brush in water and I want this to have a little bit of transparency. So now I have water on my brush. I'm just gonna go back and lift a little bit because it got a little too opaque and I, you know, the, the beauty of watercolor to me is that transparency. So it's gonna lift a little bit. And while it's wet, I'm putting a little bit more pigment at the very bottom of the spine here. Okay, now I am going to ask, does anybody want feedback at this point or should we keep going on? Are you feeling, anybody have any questions? No, just say I have a question if you do. So notice that I have white spaces here, here. There's a lot of, there's, really not a lot of solid lines. It looks like it, but when you look closely, there's spaces left in between. Lots of breathing still. Now I'm going to do the bud. And again, we know that the light is coming this way. So the flower is gonna be monochromatic in pink. The leaf and the stem is gonna be monochromatic in green. And I'm gonna tie them together by letting the bud be green 
and pink. So I'm gonna come in on the shadow side of the bud. I'm gonna push, move and lift. It's gonna accentuate the top a little bit. I'm leaving a lot of area here because I'm gonna put some pink in there, I'm leaving some white. And then I'm gonna get my brush wet, wipe it and allow for a, a more transparent green. And I'm going to come in again on the bud and just do some lines that show that the curve of the bud without going all the way to the top. just like a little cradle to put my pink in when I'm ready for it. Everybody take a deep breath in through your nose. <laughs> Hail through your mouth. <laughs> Everybody's having such a good time, but nobody's breathing. <laughs> All right, now again, I, I'm gonna use a more of a transparent green. So I'm dipping my brush back in the water, wiping the edge so it's nice and a little bit more of a wash. I'm gonna take this wash on the back side of this leaf. So I'm just gonna come up and it's gonna be a lot lighter, thick, to thin, thick to thin, leaving white areas. So now when I squint, I see dark mid-tone and light greens. Might even use a little bit of this light green up here at the top. Maybe tie a little bit of it in here in the center area. And here, so I see green, light green, dark green, white areas. Now I'm going to leave the green on my brush and I'm going to go back. I'm going to take some of my pink. I'm going to have to mix pink twice, but I'm going to take some of my pink with this green and make a deep kind of raspberry neutral pink. I might have to add a little bit more pigment going back into my pink or my red again, my lizard and crimson. So I've really muddied this down, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a tiny bit of it on the tip of my brush and I'm gonna use it to accent my shadows. So I'm gonna come back here and in the areas that would be really dark, like in the crick of something, I'm gonna put a little bit of this darker pink. Where did you just put that? I, I wasn't looking. Um, I called it like the crook. So in, in yours, it might be, it might be in a different place, but I'm looking for areas where there would be no light, very little light. I'm getting okay. it very pasty and, and very dark like that. And so like in here, where there's just to say, it's kind of hidden in, the, in that dark area under here a little bit. Okay. And you don't want a lot of it. This is like 10% of your line work. Maybe a little there. And when you put a neutral, like see, so watch here, I've got this beautiful pink thing happening. When I add a little neutral, tiny bit of it, it's like bartending to the brighter part, the brighter part pops more. I'm just putting enough to complement the lighter. 
Just in a few areas. And only do it if it feels right. Check in with your body. Does it feel good? Okay, now I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do the, um, the lighter shade of pink. So I'm gonna go back into my original pink. You might have to mix them up if yours got muddied. It's a lot of water, wiping the side of my brush. And like we did here on the leaf, I'm gonna do this in the petals. So here I know this is going down towards the center. So I'm gonna just take, not all the way, but I'm gonna take it like down the center of the tongue. And maybe a little bit on the edge. This is watery, Wendra? Yes, watery, this one? the original pink, but a lot watery, more watery. Okay. So I'm just adding another, a, a washy pink to some of the edges and defining the center line. You see, it's very imperfect. And so you're gonna start like here, I have to make a decision. Do I want it to touch this one where there's already pink or just come down the center? There's already pink. I think here I'll go in the center because I've got, I wanna leave breathing space. So deciding how much pigment you want by looking at what's relative on the page already next to it. Kind of some of these decisions you just have to make as you go along. I have to freshen up my pink, got a little dirty. I'm going to freshen up like makeup. Excuse me, excuse me while I freshen up. So I'm just kind of working my way around, doing that same thing of a, a light, a light touch of this pink. And this one I'm coming right through the center. I know I'm gonna put really dark stamens there, so I'm just, And I'm going to use a little bit of this watery pink. I got to mix more up. I used all of mine up. So down back to the bud that's going to have pink and green. 
it's going to have the deeper color towards the base of the bed. So I've got this watery pink on here. I'm going to start with the tip of my brush, like it's growing out. Push and lift. Put that there. I'm going to drop a little bit more pigment in towards the base. They're a little heavy handed, so I'm going to spread it out. And now I'm going to make I'm going to let this dry before I do the stamens and check in with everybody. I'm going to turn the recording off here for a minute. Stamens. And then I'm just going to very like um, organically just go over because I already like my drawing. It's going to plop, plop. I want it to look and feel very um, playful and uninhibited. I don't want it to feel, I want it to feel floaty. And then I'm gonna take the very tip of my brush or my smaller brush and do these very thin hairline. Oops, they should not come in front of your, that's a boo-boo, I mean, a little water, got a little carried away. Oh, that's a dirty brush. Got to get a clean brush. Okay, this is a clean brush. Um, so you see what I did here? I accidentally came in front of my petal. This is in the front. I got to lift those stamens out of there. Goodbye, stamens. <laughs> and that worked. Okay, and now I just want it to feel fresh and alive. So I'm going to get a very, very watery pink. Lots of water, more water than pigment, even though it looks very pigmenty. And I'm going to take two brushes or a pencil and a brush and let it look like the stamens are floating through the air. What color? Make some music. What color? What color do you use? I used a very watery pink. Okay. You can even do both. You can and do for the, the, I wanted to use pink because I wanted to this I wanted it to look like stamens were floating. So what were you saying, Susan? Oh yeah. What color was the stem of the stamen? Uh, I took the same pink and I added um, a tiny bit of purple and a teeny tiny bit of black just to okay. deepen it. Um, oh, so it's the same color as those little round things on top of the stamen, right? It, the whole thing's the same. Yeah. Okay. And then the splatter was a very watered down of that or of your pink, either one. It doesn't matter. It's going to be very watery. So it's, we're at, we're at the end of class. I'm going to stop the recording. I'm going to check in with everyone.